Hello and welcome back to a new video about augmented reality. Last time we made our first augmented reality with Ophora Studio. This time we want to do a little bit a more complex thing. Yeah? This time we will want to do this thing. Yeah? This is something I have drawn yeah? as simply as little experiment. Yeah? It's a little windmill. It consists of three parts. You even can you even see this? Yeah, it consists of three parts. Well, there's the body, yeah, the house, yeah. Then there's the roof, and then there is the how is this even called? The turbine, ventilator, fan, the fan. Huh? I don't know the fan. Cold fan. Yeah. I've drawn this again with SolidWorks. The roof and the fan, they are one assembly. Yeah, and consisting of two parts, roof part, fan part, and the house is also one part. So this I want to build and I wanted to build it that way that whenever this drawing is recognized somewhere, it shall place the windmill as augmented reality above this drawing. Okay, This would be the goal. To Use this as a so-called picture target. Hmm? If the picture is seen in reality, back the augmented, the virtual windmill is placed here. Good. This is our situation from last time. Yeah? We have made our project. Yeah? Of course, we could do another project as well. Yeah? This we could do. However, we will simply extend this project because everything is already configured, experience service and so on. So we will open this project. Yeah. Project open. This is the dice from last time. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you remember. Yeah. This is the dice. And we want to add another part, another so-called view. Okay. So here are the views. On the left hand side, I will simply add another one and I name it windmill. Windmill. Okay, this is my new view. Yeah? And it's an augmented reality, not 2D, augmented reality again. Yeah? Ready? Now we add a windmill. Some things we already know. Yeah? We, need a, we need a target. Yeah? This time we need a picture target. We are using the picture target. So we will drag the picture target inside, inside our canvas. There is the picture. Now, without, without picture, I need also to have a resource. So I will add a resource with a PNG file or something like this. Here I've used this and I will use this windmill, little, little drawing. If we zoom in, you see, it's exactly this picture. Without the frame, just the picture, but that's it. This should be my target. Okay, So I will place it again at zero, zero. Yeah, perfect. Next thing I will have to put on is the the house. Yeah? So I will I will simply add now already the resources. Yeah? So this is this is the house and this this is this is the assembly and this is the house. Yeah? Open those two. Yeah? Add all the small parts. Also don't need to, to use the CAD optimizer. So I will add a model now. Back. Yeah? Here is the model. Yeah? I will add a resource. Yeah. Here it is. Yeah. Now there is the resource, a little bit big, I must say. Yeah. Or is the picture small? Is this big or is the picture small? Yeah. This would be then bright, quite a windmill here. Yeah. Let's see how big is the picture. Aha! Uh -huh. It's only two centimeters. 
two centimeters. It's more than two centimeters. Yeah? It's around 15. Yeah? So we'll enter this 0 0.15. Yeah? Aha. This already looks a little bit different. Now it's 15. Yeah. It's equally as big as the drawing, I would say. Yeah? This is this is now how this looks like. And here I already have image target one, model one, so we'll also rename this. Yeah? Studio ID, rename the studio ID, target picture. Uh, this is the picture target. And the model I will call studio ID model uh, uh, house. House, I'll call it house. Uh, okay. Now there's the house. This is pretty much what we did last time, right? Now I'm adding a second model, book. Yeah? The second model, I will select the moving part. I will also add here 0, 0, 0. Yeah? And now I will simply move it up. Ooh, <laughs> here of course, 0 0.15. Let's see, ah, it's too much. 12, 1, how does this look? 10 centimeters. Uh, I'm not fully satisfied. Is this at zero? No, it's also not at zero. I will place this at zero and zero. Okay. And this one, I will place at 9, 5. Mm. Maybe 9.2. Ah, oh, this looks nice. There's a little bit a gap. Yeah? So it looks like we could move it. Yeah? And if we change the Y moving, you see? This is what I want to do. Yeah? I want to, to change 90 degree, yeah? 175 degree. Now I can move my fan into the wind. Yeah. This should be what needs to be animated. Yeah. 180. Yeah. This, this is how it should look like. Yeah. Let's save this. Yeah. Now we have, uh, maybe I should also rename this one. Yeah. That's the model moving. I will call it moving. So that's the roof and the fan. Here I can select preview. If I select preview, I can test how this would look like. Aha, it's still showing the dice. However, I can select the windmill. Now it's showing the windmill and now yes, it's what I would expect. Uh, back. Close the preview. Why it's showing the ties? Yeah? This is here. Yeah? Because here it's initial view. Yeah? If I select here windmill yeah? and start again the preview, then the thing I, I see is the windmill. Yeah? So that's the initial view when the project is called. Okay? Oh, switch, switch it to windmill. Yeah, but right now it's boring, right? It's boring. It looks better than, than just the dice, but yeah. Let's do a little bit more. Yeah? I want that I can on the fly change the rotation of this part. Okay? By the way, at which point is this rotating? You see here it's drawn here, but it's actually it's rotating here. This is where the origin in your model is placed. Okay? It always rotates around the origin of the assembly. So you have to take care if you want to use it in augmented reality that all the origins, the Ursprünge, yeah, 0, 0, 0 coordinates, are at the correct place that the movement looks nice. Yeah. So, 
I want to move this yeah? during viewing and not just during compiling. Yeah? What I need for this is some sort of slider, some sort of input element where I can set this. Okay. So I can switch here to 2D. Here's the 3D view. Now I switch to 2D. And then we see uh, the surface, our touch surface of our device. And suddenly also those things did change. Now I can add some parts. And I can add a slider, for instance. We'll add a slider up here. This slider I will call slider angle. And now minimum value shall be zero. Maximum value shall be 360. It's from zero to 360 degree. Yeah. The step width is one degree. When so the slider now has 360 positions and I can select it one by one. Yeah. And the initial value shall be 180. This is how it looks right now. Yeah. Okay. So this is now the value. Yeah? How do I get the value to the moving part? How do I combine those two? Yeah? And this thing here is working with drag and drop. Okay? Here, these little arrows, I can take them, I can move them to the moving part here, and then I let it drop, pick, and then I can select which part I want to bind to this value. I don't want to bind the Y turning, rotation, yeah, binding. Now it's bound. Let's see how this looks like. Press again preview. Now I have here the slider and now I can change the slider. Aha! And the according value which I just bound to this is also changing from 360 to zero degree. 180 was the initial value. Nice, isn't it? It's nice. Yes, it's nice. So, uh, it's about time. Well, what I do not really like is this plus and minus here. It's plus and minus. Huh? You can change this with this iron values. You can change this with this, with this iron values, and there are a lot of iron values which can be selected. Uh, plus and minus, you see, iron minus round, iron minus plus, and so on. Yeah. So uh, there, you can look up in the internet. There are a lot of these. Just type in iron, iron signs. Okay. Then you will find probably quite a lot of them. Yeah? One possibility is this iron arrow return right. Yeah? You see, it immediately changed, turn left, yeah? and iron arrow return left back yeah. this looks a little bit more like rotating yeah. there are a lot of there are a lot of <laughs> those 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 uh, symbols you can select yeah. depending a little bit on the hardware you are using they are displayed a little bit different yeah. but those this one also worked pretty fine for me up to now on every hardware yeah, so save and I would say publish. Yeah. Ah, username. I have to enter the username, of course. Yeah. Of course, I have to look it up. I don't know it. 
top of my head. Dun, 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 dun. Most correct, huh? upload it. It's the username you've got from PTC, from a PTC account or from me if you're in school. Huh? Ba, ba, ba. Now it's published. Huh? Now we should be able to see this on our mobile phone. And we will try this now. Okay. Okay, so let's start with a view on our mobile phone. Okay, working. Here is the picture. Of course, I need to first scan the uh, thing mark, which is associated with my project. Yes, this is the project I want to use. It's loading. Oh, and it immediately found it. Immediately found the, and I can watch it from every side. Okay, is the slider. Yes, it's working. So you see, it's a nice feature, isn't it? Huh? Nice. Nicey, nicey. Huh? Go a little bit closer. <laughs> I always like this. I always like this because it's working pretty well. Huh? Now let's see if I move this. <laughs> Have you seen this? It will track the drawing. It's a little bit pak pak pak. Yeah? <laughs> oh, it's nice. I like it. I like this 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 sort of technology. Yeah? Here we have the fan. Next thing, that's the next thing we are going to do. Animate the fan. But this then will be in next video. Huh? Yeah, no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> well, this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.